my little brother gets drinks of beer whenever he asks. Home videos show him sipping from cans repeatedly. My mother gifts my father a handle of whiskey every year for his birthday. Instead of getting lectured for misbehaving, my father pours whiskey, glass after glass, while he chain smokes in silence. I sometimes watch him drink in anger for 45 minutes at a time, waiting for him to express his disappointment. A girlfriend says, I didn't know your mom got high during a visit to my house. What I thought was just the way mom smelled is actually weed smoke. I start drinking nearly every weekend, often to the point of blacking out. I make a marker for myself that if getting up to pee is entertaining because I have to fight the spins to aim, I've drank enough. On a regular basis, I drink until I'm sick, vomit, and then keep drinking. This also helps me stay as skinny as possible, which never seems to be skinny enough. I skip school to hang out with people in their 20s at a flop house. I sneak to East St. Louis for concerts. I crave danger and care about very little besides making music and being cool. I tell a teacher I'm questioning my sexuality and I have a drinking problem. She initiates a sexual relationship with me. She's 34 and I'm 17. The teacher elaborately explains how her husband will kill me or her child will be taken away if I tell anyone about our relationship. My parents become best friends with the teacher, despite my parents being 20 years older than her. They go as far as to buy her a small house just two miles away, and she's now at family birthdays, Christmas mornings, and any major life event. I begin getting high alone, and on some nights I hallucinate uncontrollably. I hear things. I see things. I begin to have what I can tell are delusional thoughts, that I have magic powers of some sort. Unbeknownst to me, this is the first signs of my bipolar disorder. I tell my mom, I think something's wrong with my brain. She acts annoyed and says, what do you want, medication? And that is the entirety of the conversation. I survive my first attempt to die. Closing my eyes, I drive on the highway going 80 miles an hour, I count the seconds and see how long I can keep them closed. I fantasize about dying as a way to end the tension I constantly feel. I believe I'm alone in the world, despite having many friends. I get closer and closer with my drug dealer friends. While we drink, they casually hand me pills. I ask what they are, but never refuse them. Xanax, painkillers. I mix whatever I can with alcohol to not feel like myself. I want to leave my head as often as possible. I'm smoking weed every day. The night after graduation, I simply don't come home. A weed dealer lets me stay in his trailer by the railroad tracks for a few hundred dollars. I move to Columbia and begin drinking every night. I take it as a challenge, and I brag about my accomplishments of never missing a day. I start taking high doses of mushrooms every other weekend. My brain feels altered. My thoughts don't work the same. I start to feel like I'm not as intelligent as I once was. I start holding parties at least once a week. I drink from open beer cans once everyone has gone home, sometimes getting mouthfuls of cigarette butts. I become friends with heroin addicts and full-time criminals. A roommate confesses to murder. I stop him from raping a 14-year-old girl after a party and don't tell anyone what's happened for almost 10 years. I begin to say I'm having a midlife crisis because I plan to die by 40. My parents tell me if I end up in jail to not call them. When I do end up in jail, I don't call them. I think I'm going to prison for weeks and I pack my belongings as I wait to go to court. I get off with probation, in which I continue to sell weed, do graffiti, and shoplift on a weekly basis. I get hit by a car, and I'm told being drunk on Everclear saves my life because I flop instead of tightening so my spine doesn't break. I have even more trouble thinking straight. I drop out of college. I live off food from dumpsters. 
I stay awake all night and sleep all day. I live in two worlds, one of denial, where I enjoy my time, have hobbies, relationships, and I'm a regular human. My secret life is one where I'm in tune with the universe in ways that are unexplainable. I have access to a magic world, existing beneath the one you know. This is my mania and delusion increasing. I have intrusive thoughts, flashes of bones breaking, and terrible sexual acts. I have trouble with relationships. I break up with my girlfriend and don't remember doing it. I'm kicked out by my roommates and no longer welcome on family members' couches after staying for weeks. I stop speaking with my parents. I sleep on friends of friends' couches, on porches, and even in an office waiting room. I try to sneak into my parents to get a box of nostalgic items. My dad finds me, pours himself whiskey, and says, Are you going to apologize to your mother? I leave without saying anything. As I drive away, he runs after the car screaming. I live in a van with my bandmates while we're on and off tour. We drive out west for a job trimming weed that will never be real. We stink badly. I'm miserable. My friends that share the van with me and I are always arguing. I leave them in a hitchhike with a new friend who's wanted for attempted murder. We end up staying under a bridge in a small town in California with teens that smoke crack. I sustain myself on government cheese. I eat off of a designated log. I heat over the fire. I eat only this warm cheese and the occasional can of beans for weeks. Knowing anybody who sees me can tell no one knows or cares where I am, the fear of rape stains my mind, and I'm on alert around the clock. I sleep with my shoes as a pillow and keep a knife. I find illegal housing for $75 a month, run by a convict that takes in criminals on the lam. There is a machine gun against the wall at all times. I reconnect with my parents my dad helps me paint my room, which is stained everywhere with splatters of blood because it's recently been a shooting gallery where heroin users empty their syringes on the walls. My life starts to stabilize. I stop selling weed. I start reading again. And I'm only getting wasted once a week or so. I have a horrible accident doing extreme sports. I break three bones and rip open my face. I convince the doctor to not give me any casts or keep me in the hospital. I'm prescribed Percocet. My friends bring me bags of weed. I take 10 pills a day for two months. I no longer have any emotions except an occasional dull want to not exist. I'm 24 and I feel like I've failed at everything. Surrounded by friends and family, I feel utterly alone. I believe I am a freak that no one understands, with no hope for a future. I start drinking while taking Percocet, which I know might kill me. Some nights, I halfway plan to not wake up. I start mopping the floors at a local venue every day, and slowly work my way up to being a roadie for other venues in town. I stop taking pills and mushrooms, but keep drinking every night. I get a real apartment. I start being able to maintain friendships again. I get a growth. I think I'm dying of cancer. I accidentally impregnate a girl that then won't talk to me. I don't know if she's keeping the baby or not. My morning routine becomes a walk to the corner store to pour vodka into a soda. I drink every moment I'm awake for months. I no longer get drunk. It only stabilizes me. I owe my weed dealer friends lots of money. I owe every person in my life lots of money. I lay on my couch and stare at the ceiling for most of my time. 
wishing the rush of euphoria would come back while I smoke weed and drink heavily. Sometimes I drink so much I get the spins without ever leaving my head. I'm stuck. Soon I'll either be dead or the father to a child I may never meet. I pay for an abortion and finally go to the doctor, who tells me I have a hernia and not cancer. But I've had a cold for weeks. To shake the flu, I stop drinking and smoking weed, and I go into withdrawal. I shake. I sweat. I'm cold. I sleep two hours a night, and when I do, I have night terrors so intense I wake up bawling my eyes out. It's the worst experience of my life. The only thing motivating me to endure is a feeling of shame. I'm being punished to atone for my sins, and it's been a long time coming. Even though this new hell is worse than the last, at least it's something new. There's no longer an escape. Getting sober or staying drunk, both options are constant suffering. Mm. 